What's happening everybody? It's Passive Crypto Mining here. Today's video is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can set and run the community tool to ensure that your aware element devices are connected and are streaming the relevant amounts of data. This step-by-step -step tutorial means that you don't have to run your PC 24-7. If you want to be up to speed, you'll know that the uh, Planet Watch announced that they are no longer going to be utilizing the services of Aware to say that Aware canceled the contract. Aware obviously responded with their own concerns and Planet Watch came back with their response. Yes, it was a little bit messy. So what was the plan from Planet Watch? Well, they released a contingency plan, which included a community tool, which has to be run 24 seven. And it's the only way to send your streams to get your rewards. Now, a lot of people had an issue with this, namely because it's a running of a PC 24 hours a day, and also because of the cost of electricity, it may not be worth it. Today's method is going to be using a virtual private server. It's completely free, and it runs in the background, on the cloud, in the internet, so you can still ensure that you get maximum rewards. Let's jump into this step-by-step -step video. First thing is, you need to go to AWS. I'll have a link in the description. This is Amazon's web services. Click get started for free and now type in your email address. Thereafter, you can type any account name. You can change it as you go along. Let's say for the sake of argument, we're going to type in passive crypto mining here. Once you've typed in the uh, information, you're going to have to verify your email address. Once you've verified your email address, create a password. Make sure that you uh, confirm the password. And thereafter, you'll be asked to enter your name, your telephone number and your address. Fill in the details as you wish to. Now, finally, you'll be asked to type in your card details, but Amazon does not charge you for this. This is just for identity purposes. Once you've filled in your card details, type in your telephone phone number and you'll get a verification number that's sent to your phone that you need to enter. This is a very simple step-by-step -step process. You have to enter your card details to get past that step. Now you click on the basic support package, which is the free package, which we are going to utilize. And congratulations, you're now in. Now you'll be asked to sign in, so you enter your, root, you, uh, your user email address and your password and you'll be into the Amazon console. So where do we go from here? Well, we want to change our location to the nearest location to where we are to ensure that we get the best services. In the top right hand corner, we can click a drop down box of where the local uh, servers are. I'm going to click London because it's in the UK and it's probably best suited for me. Thereafter, we're going to go to launch a virtual machine, you can see here with EC2. It says here two to three minutes. The process is very quick. We'll click on launch a virtual machine and here we'll type in Windows. We're going to click on Windows 2019 server and there is a free tier here that we're going to click on review and launch. Once we've done that, we're going to be asked to select an existing pair. Here we're going to create a new key pair. We're going to give it a name and we're going to save this on our computer. It's very important that we keep a hold of this. It's going to have encrypted data that we are going to use later on to get a password for our virtual server. Now, once you've done this, you're going to have to wait at least five minutes to get your virtual server up and running. Click on EC2, click on instances. And after about five minutes, if not less, you'll see your instance running. You can see that I've got two here that are terminated, but I've got one here that's running. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to click on connect or I'll click connect at the top. Now RDP client means remote desktop client. That's what we're going to utilize. We need to get a password for our virtual private server. So we're going to click on get password, click browse, and we're going to click on that document that we downloaded earlier on. We're going to click decrypt password. And now we're going to get a password that's going to allow us to log into this private server. Click copy on the password and save it somewhere important. The username for this account, as we can see, is administrator, and we're going to save that as well. Lastly, if you click on your instance at the top, you'll get a public IP address. This is the last information that you need. You'll need this to log into your virtual private server. Once you've done this, you click on the instance and you want to click connect. Go to the remote desktop client. If you're on Windows, you simply click download remote desktop file and it will save a file on your desktop that you double click and you enter the password that you saved previously. If you're on Mac, like I am at the moment, then you have to download an application called remote desktop. Go to your app store, click on remote desktop and click download. Once you've downloaded, you'll want to add a PC. Here you'll type in the IP address where it says PC name. For user account, you want to click on add a user account. Now the username is administrator as we mentioned. 
and the password is the password that we entered previously. You should now have the IP address as the PC name. User account is the administrator account that you just created. And so you can click add and add that PC. Now you double click on the PC and it should load, click continue, and then add the password that you saved previously. And congratulations, you now have a virtual private server that's running Windows that you can now run the community tool on. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna open Internet Explorer. For the uh, security settings, it doesn't matter what we click here. We're going to paste in the GitHub link, which has the latest version of the community tool. Internet Explorer is going to say that it's a non-trusted website, so we just want to add it to our trusted websites. Uncheck the box that says continue to prompt, and then if we refresh the page, we now can see this page. Because we're running a Windows virtual server, we're going to click on the exe file. It's going to say that we can't open it, but not a problem. We're going to go back and right click. We're going to click save target as, and uh, it's going to come up with another security prompt. Not to worry. We just add it again to our safe website list. Click on uh, close. And now it should save it to our desktop. Once we do that, it's going to say that it couldn't be downloaded. Not a problem. We click on view downloads. We click retry. And after a few seconds, we should see the icon appear on the desktop to show that this item has now been downloaded. From here, we just click on the actual community tool. I'm running version two because it's uh, the 5th of April. There may be a later version when you do this. Uh, wait a few minutes. I think it took me about a minute and a half for this to open in the end. Once it opens, you'll be able to see the screen. If the screen comes up as blank, then what they've advised is if you click on view and force reload or force reboot, what will happen is the screen will then show what it needs to show. And that is the login details for your Planet Watch Explorer account. Add in your email and your password. Don't click remember me if you have other accounts that you need to log into. You'll be greeted with a screen like this. It shows your available Planet Watch sensors associated with your account. Now what we have to do is we have to add the API key from the Aware Element website. So how do we do that? You can see the information here. You want to go to developer.getaware.com. I don't want to open this in the VPS because it doesn't run Java. So I'm going to open this in Chrome, which is on my laptop, and I'm going to click sign in and here I'm going to have my API access token I'm going to copy this to the clipboard and then I'm going to paste this into the add sensor box once I've done that it's going to give me a list of all the sensors that I have in this token I'm going to click add to your token and now I'm going to see that my planet watch sensors are successfully sending data to planet watch this will be updating in real time and I can check the status of this on my Explorer account as well and that's it. You can close this. You can turn your PC off. This will be running in the background. If at any time you want to check in on it, then you can just open it through the credentials that I showed before. Hopefully, this is a useful tool for those of you that want to ensure that you still receive the maximum rewards that you can whilst not having to have your PC on 24-7. That's it from me. And I'll keep you updated if there are any developments. Do check the description for that. And I'll see you in the next video.